Okay, inshallah we will uh, go ahead and begin, and uh, inshallah we will keep it brief, we won't keep you, re- you all very long. Bismillah, inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu, wa na'udhu billahi min sururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'amalina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudillalah, wa man yudlil fala hadiyalah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبرت منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الهديت كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Really all praise is due to Allah So we praise him and we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge with Allah from the evils of our own souls and the wrongdoings of our own actions. And wherever Allah guides, there is none who can lead him astray. And wherever he leads astray, there is none who can guide him. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship as, as a God except Allah alone, who has no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. Allah says in the Quran, the translation of which in English is, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he deserves to be feared and do not die except as Muslims. And O you mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul, who we call Adam, and from that soul he created his mate, Hawa, Eve, and from those two human beings he spread men and women throughout the earth in numerous numbers. And fear your Lord by whom you ask your mutual rights between you, and keep the good relations with your relatives, for surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is an ever watcher over you. And O you who believe, fear Allah and speak a word that is right. If you do this, Allah will correct for you your deeds and actions, making them righteous deeds and actions, and he will forgive you for your sins. And whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then verily that person has achieved a great victory. And to proceed, verily the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah, the Qur'an. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all affairs are newly introduced matters into the religion. For verily, every newly introduced matter into the religion is an innovation, and every innovation is a stray, and every astray matter is in the hellfire. So we continue today with our book, Bahdat uh, al-Qulub al-Abrar wa Qurtu al-Uyun al-Akhyar fi Sharhi Jawami al-Akhbar by Shaykh Abdul Rahman bin Nasr al-Sa'adi, rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy upon him. And so we're, uh, I think, I see that, uh, I think you all have been passed out copies or you have received copies of the hadith that we'll be discussing today from that book. And we will be discussing the sharh, the explanation of this hadith, the explanation of this hadith that was presented by Al-Allama, Al-Shaykh Abdul Rahman bin Nasr al-Sa'adi. So the hadith, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من دعا إلى هدى كان له من الأجر مثل أجور من تبعه لا ينقص ذلك من أجورهم شيئا ومن دعا إلى ضلالة كان عليه من الإثم مثل آتان من تبعه لا ينقص ذلك من آتانهم شيئا رواه مسلم So this hadith I think this is the hadith that you all have. I think that's correct. Uh, whoever invites to guidance, whoever calls others to guidance, then he will have the reward similar to or just like the, the reward of whoever follows him. Whoever follows him in that guidance, that righteous guidance, then he will get the, whoever calls him to that guidance, he will get the same reward of all of the people who follow him in that guidance. And that will not decrease or diminish anything from their reward at all. And the Prophet ﷺ, he went on to say, and whoever calls others to dalala, misguidance, deviance, if you will, then he will have upon him the sin similar to or just like the sins of all of those who follow him in that deviance, in that dalala, in that misguidance. And that will not decrease or diminish anything from their sins or their, 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 uh, their sins at all. This hadith was reported by an Imam Muslim in his Sahih collection, Sahih Muslim. Uh, it's authentic, and the hadith is authentic. So the Shaykh Abdul Rahman bin Nasr al-Sa'adi says in explaining this hadith, he says, هذا الحديث وما أشبهه من الأحديث 
فيه الحث على الدعوة إلى الهدى والخير وقبل الداعي والتحذير من الدعاء إلى الضلالة والغير وعلم جرم الداعي وعقوبته So he says this hadith and there are other hadith that are similar to it why does he say other hadith that are similar to it because there are other narrations from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam with a similar meaning like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in another narration ad-dalu ala al-khayr kata'ili the one who guides others to good is just like the one who does the good and there are other similar narrations you know and that's so the shaykh says well ma asbaha thalika and what is similar to that so this hadith contains what? it contains an encouragement to call others to right guidance and to call others to good and the virtue, the public, the virtue of the one who calls others to good and it also, this hadith also contains a warning from calling people to misguidance and deviation okay, and sin and it also contains a, um, a testament to the tremendous crime of the person who calls others to sin and what his punishment will be for calling others to misguidance and sin and deviation okay so he goes on he says well huda what is al huda that the prophet talks about he says man da'a ila huda whoever calls the huda so he's the shirk says al huda who al ilm al nafi' wal amal al salih he says huda guidance it is beneficial knowledge and it is righteous action righteous, righteous deeds okay so um there's something i want to point out here in what the shirk is saying that was explained by one of his students was Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen rahimahullah he was a student of Abdurrahman ibn Nasr al-Sa'adi Shaykh al-Uthaymeen he mentioned uh, in his explanation of uh, the 40 hadith of Al-Imam al-Nawawi he mentioned that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions al-Huda for example there's a verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says huwa allazhi ba'atha fil ummiheen al-rasoolan minhum يَقْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّهِمْ No, not, not this eye, excuse me. He says, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ الرَّسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينَ الْحَقِّ لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى دِينِ كُلِّ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ Allah says, he is the one, I was misquoting the first eye, not that eye, but this one I'm talking about. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ الرَّسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى Allah is the one who sent his messenger بِالْهُدَى with the same Huda that we're talking about, guidance. وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ to make it dominant over other, all other religions. Well, I'll tell you, and even though the people who worship others besides the law, they may hate that. So, this is my point in mentioning this. Shaykh al mean, he says, in this ayah, Allah mentions al-Huda wa din al-Haq. Huwa arsala rasulahu bin Huda wa din al-Haq. Allah is the one who sent his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the Huda, which we translate in guidance, wa din al-Haq, and the religion of truth. So, ma hu al-Farq bain al-Huda wa din al-Haq. What's the difference? between Al-Huda and Deen Al-Haq you know, Alayhi Deen Al-Haq well, Al-Huda is not the religion of truth is it not right guidance? so what is it? Allah is saying two things He sent Muhammad with two things Allah Tala Rasulahu bin Huda wa Deen Al-Haq He sent us nothing to do with the Huda, the guidance and the religion of truth so what's the difference between the two? what are these Huda and Deen Al-Haq? Why, what are these two things? because it's just one's rational thinking you would say the Deen Al-Haq of course this is Islam is that not Huda? is that not righteous guidance? and is not righteous guidance? the religion of truth, Islam. So what's the difference? Shaykh al Taymin says, when you see these terms used together, Huda and the Deen al-Haq together, then they're two different things. They're not the same thing. In that case, al-Huda, al-Huda is al-ilm al-Nafi'ah. Al-ilm al-Nafi'ah, beneficial knowledge. Wa Deen al-Haq and the religion of truth, it is al-Amal al-Salih. It is acting according to that knowledge. You understand? So the Huda, in that sense, when Allah mentions them together, al-Huda, wa Deen al-Haq, ma'an. يَذْكُرَهُمَا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى مَعَنْ Together. Okay? To the Qur'an. Then they're not the same thing. One is, the huda is the ilm. What type of ilm? Ilm al-nafi'ah. The beneficial knowledge. And the deen al-haq, the deen, this is al-amal. What type of amal? Al-amal al-salih. The righteous action that goes along with that knowledge that you have. Okay? So you may have beneficial knowledge, but when you act upon it, that's, right, that, that's the righteous action. Okay? You're acting upon that which you know. So those are the two things that Allah sent Muhammad Sallallahu with, okay? But if they're mentioned individually, if Allah just mentions the deen, okay? Or if Allah just mentions Huda, then they mean the same, they mean both. They mean the benefits of knowledge and righteous action, they mean both of them. And here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi just mentions, he mentions Huda. So here, that's why the Shaykh, Abdul Rahman bin Nasr al-Sa'adi here, is saying that Huda here means al-ilm al-nafi' wal-amal al-salih. 
You understand? You all understand my point? Is it clear? Zahir wabi yaqwan. Okay. Okay, so this is so this is what that means. Huda. So the source is Huda, who is Ilm al Nafiq, who is Amr al Salih. So he says, فَكُلُّ مَنْ عَلِمَ عِلْمًا أَوْ وَجَّهَ الْمُتَعَلِّمِينَ إِلَى سُلُوكِ طَرِيقَةٍ يَحْسَلُ لَهُمْ فِيهَا عِلْمٍ فَهُوَ الْدَاعِي إِلَى الْهُدَى So he says, so every person who knows some knowledge, and he directs other people who are learning to that knowledge, to traversing upon the path of this knowledge, where they will uh, attain that beneficial knowledge with that, then that, and they will act according to it like this. So who are da'i ila huda? Then that person is one who is calling to right guidance. Wa kullu man da'a ila amr al-salih yata'alluq bi haqqi Allah aw bi huquq al-khalq al-amah wa al-khasa fa huwa da'i ila al-huda. So he says, so every person who calls others to righteous action that, go, that is related to the rights of, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or righteous action that is related to the rights of, the cre- of Allah's creatures in general and in specific then that person is one who is calling to Al-Huda which we said Al-Huda is Al-Ilm Al-Nafi' wal Amr Al-Salih so he says وَكُلُّ مَنْ أَدَّ نَصِيحَةً دِينِيَةً أَوْ دُنْيَوِيَةً يَتَوَصُلْ بِهَا إِلَى الدِّينِ فَهُوَ دَعِي إِلَى الْهُدَى so any person who gives some direction or some advice some religious advice to others or some worldly, some advice of regarding their worldly matters that he gives to others, which will help them to carry, to practice their religion, okay? Then that person is a caller to right guidance. And then he goes on to say, وَكُلُّ مَنْ اَفْتَدَى بِعِلْمِهِ أَوْ عَمْلِهِ فَاَقْتَدَى بِهِ غَيْرُهُ فَهُوَ دَعِي إِلَى الْهُدَى And every person who guides others regarding the, his knowledge and his, his actions, and those people follow him, others decide that they follow him in his beneficial knowledge and his righteous action. In other words, they take him as an example, following him in what he is either calling them to or what he's showing them in his righteous action, and other people they follow him in that, then he himself is that person is considered a da'i in a Buddha, a caller to righteous guidance. And so he says, Well Kul man taqadama Zayra who be Amin Amal in the Khaidi or Mashru Amin Nah and Nata, for who are Dafi will be having enough. So he says, so every person who perceives others in doing any good deed, okay, or any type of activity that is, is benefit encompasses everyone, is, is, is benefit, is, is beneficial to the people in general, then that person is included in this text, in this hadith, in the meaning of this hadith. And the opposite of that is the same, a da'il al the one who calls to misguided, is the direct opposite of that. He says, the da'un al hadith, whom I am to muttaqeen, wa khiyar al mu'minin. So the person who calls to right guidance, those people who call to right guidance, they are ayamat al muttaqeen they are the imams of righteousness, wa khiyar al mu'minin and the virtuous people amongst the believers. Wa da'una ila al-dalala, and those people who call to right guidance, humu al-ayamat al-ladina yad'una ila al-naab, they are imams, he says they are imams, they are leaders, who call people to al-naab, the hellfire, they call people to the fire. وَكُلُّ مَنْ عَاوَنَا غَيْرَهُ عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَقْوَى فَهُوَ مِنَ الدَّاعِينَ إِلَى الْهُدَى So whoever cooperates with others in calling to righteousness, upon righteousness and piety, fear of Allah, a taqwa, then that person is from those people who call to guidance. As Allah says, تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِسْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Help each other, cooperate in al-bir, wa taqwa, in righteousness, in taqwa, fear of Allah, piety. وَلَا تَعَوْنُ عَلَى الْإِثْنِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ And don't help each other in ithm, sinfulness, and udwan, transgression. Okay? And so he says, وَكُلُّ مَنْ عَانَ غَيْرُهُ عَلَى الْإِثْنِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ فَهُوَ مِنَ الدَّاعِينَ إِلَى الْضَلَالَةِ And whoever helps others in committing sin and in committing transgression, acts of evil, then that person in reality, he is a caller to a dalala, to misguidance. Is it clear yet, Juan? Does it make sense? Okay, it's pretty much straightforward. And this goes along with verses in the Quran, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلٌ مِّمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And he works righteous deeds. So it's not just about calling people or having knowledge, but it's also acting according to the knowledge, acting according to what you know. And then the person says, 
وانا من المسلم اذا يقول لي انت فاهم المسلمين اوكي وانني من المسلمين بل انا فاهم المسلم ان الطاقه الله سبحانه وتعالى قال قل هذه ابو ابي سيد قال محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اذا قل هذه السبيل ادعو الى الله على بصيره انا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما انا من المشركين ان الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول قال محمد شيخ بن محمد this is my way هذه السبيل and what do you tell me to do ادعو الى I call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I call others to Allah, to obedience to Allah, to submission to Allah, to worshiping Allah. Allah basira. Upon what? Upon sure knowledge, upon basira, not upon desires, al-ahwa, desires and whims and so, and so forth, or upon superstitions or upon culture, but Allah basira, upon sure knowledge from Allah. I call people to Allah with knowledge. Allah wa mina tabani, me and whoever follows me. Me, the Prophet the Allah told Prophet Muhammad to say, me and whoever follows me. Wa subhanallahi wa ma ana min al-mushrikeen and glory be unto Allah, I and I am not of those who associate partners with Allah. So this is all the shaykh has to say, I've said it would be short. That's all he has to say about that hadith. It's pretty much straightforward and clear. If you all have any questions about anything concerning that, if I can answer it, inshallah, I will try. Um, and uh, that is all we have. Inshallah, next week we will take another hadith. But we will stop with that. That's all the shaykh has to say about that hadith. Naam. Mm-hmm. Right, no, that's correct. Mm-hmm. No. The brother's brother, if people can't, couldn't hear the question, he's asking about another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the, the judge, he makes ijtihad, he makes, uh, he strives to ascertain a ruling, deduce a ruling, and he is correct. فَلَهُ أَجْنَانِ Then he will get two rewards, the Prophet said. And if he makes, if the judge makes his jihad, he tries to deduce what is correct from a situation, to deduce a correct ruling, but he makes a mistake, he makes error, then he says, فَلَهُ أَجْنَانِ Then he will get one reward, يعني أَجْنُ وَاحِدْ So um, this is for those who are qualified to make ijtihad, a mujtahid, you know, and someone who has the qualifications to make ijtihad. Ijtihad is, uh, people, don't be confused, ijtihad, does not just mean a person just follows his own desires and makes a ruling. It means, you know, it means that he made some effort based upon what he knows from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and from the legislation, the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Based upon what he knows. Maybe there's not something clear about this particular thing. But based upon his knowledge of the Sharia, based upon his knowledge of the Book of Allah, the words of Allah, the Kalam of Allah, and his knowledge of what he knows from the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he tries to deduce a ruling about something that the Qur'an or Sunnah does not say something specifically about, okay? So he looks at what the, 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 the fawa'id, the principles that are established in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and maqasid of the Sharia, the goals of the Sharia, and what does Allah want, and what does you know, the Prophet want in these, these statements the Prophet made that, uh, from the Sunnah, and he takes that and applies it to a particular situation to try to deduce regarding this, what would probably be the correct ruling. And if he does that, and if he's qualified, okay, this is someone who's qualified. They have sufficient knowledge of the Quran, they have sufficient knowledge of the Sunnah, they have sufficient knowledge of the principles of Islam. Then they're qualified to do that, and they make a mistake, then they still get a reward. Why do they get a reward? Because they're doing what they're able to do, exerting themselves regarding what they're cap- able to do, what they're capable of doing, okay? Allah does not ask us, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ittaqullah mastafa'atum. Ittaqullah mastafa'atum. Fear Allah as much as you're able to do. Do what you're able to do. Allah does not burden any soul greater than what it is capable of bearing. And the Prophet said, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ فَأْتُمْ مِنْهُ مَا If I command you all to do something, then do it as much as you're able. Do what you're able. Allah does not burden any soul greater than what it is capable of bearing. And the Prophet said, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ فَأْتُمْ مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ If I command you all to do something, then do it as much as you're able. Do what you're able. So according to your ability. So this person, he's used what he had within his ability and tried to ascertain the truth. He wasn't just calling to ahwa and shahwa, to desires and things like this, and khurafat, superstitions. No, he tried his best, the, to the best of what he was capable of doing, what was within his ability to ascertain the truth. And so if he's correct, Allah will give him double the reward. If he's incorrect, even but because he followed the correct manhaj, the correct methodology of trying to extract the truth, Allah will still reward, reward him for that. So this is not, we don't consider this someone, you know, da'i ila balala, someone who's calling to misguidance, because he's using what he's, 
what he has available to him, and Allah cannot, does not burden you with more than what you're capable of doing, what you're able to do. Okay? And this is calling to Dalala, someone who's clearly calling to something contrary to the Quran and the Sunnah. Clearly calling to a way other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated. Clearly calling to something that is obviously opposed to what the Prophet ﷺ came with. And he doesn't care about seeking the hukum of Allah, hukm sharia, you know, the hukum of the sharia of the Islamic law. He's calling to his desires, you know. This is why these people of Balala, these people of the misguidance, they yeah, are like the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, Kullu bid'atin balala. Huh? Every bid'ah, every innovation is dalala. Wa kullu dalala tin fil nar, and every dalala is in the hellfire. The Prophet uses the same word dalala in this hadith. Man da'a ila dalala tin, whoever calls it dalala. Dalala, as the Prophet said, is bid'ah, is innovating, adding things into the religion that were not there. Things that are not from the book of Allah, not from the Quran, not from the authentic hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not from the way of the Sahaba and the Tabi'un, Atba'a Tabi'een, as Salaf as Okay? This is the person that just come up with their own thing and they're calling someone to it, and it goes against the Quran and the Sunnah. This is Dolala, okay? For the person, if, if he doesn't have anything clear from the Quran and Sunnah, and he's, you know, Imam Mujtahid, and he's a scholar who's capable of using the principles of Ijtihad, and he tries to deduce a ruling, this is not Dolala, you know? Even if he makes a mistake, we don't call this Dolala, okay? Even if he makes a mistake. And everybody makes mistakes. There's no La ihmata li ahad fi hadith umma illa li Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa there's no, no one is ma'asum, no one is infallible regarding this religion except for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everyone after the Prathom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in afraad ummah the individuals of this ummah, they make, have made errors. They have made mistakes and errors. Okay? The scholars, and we know this because the other scholars corrected them. Even amongst the Sahaba, there were Sahaba individually who made errors regarding the religion. How do we know? Because the other Sahaba corrected them and it's recorded in the books. Okay? So I'll give you an example. Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said that the Prophet never stood while passing urine. Okay? And she said, whoever told you that he did, he's lying. He said, no, he never stood while passing urine, by like urinating. Okay? But another one of his companions, Hubeza ibn al-Yaman, said, I was with him at such and such ghazwa, and I saw him standing passing urine. <laughs> you see? So Aisha only narrated what she saw, what she knew. Okay, but another Sahabi said, no, that's not correct, because I was with him, I saw him, he was standing here, and he, you know, you understand? So we know this other Sahabi corrected her, you know, so we know that no one is infallible. This is an example, just one brief, small example, many other examples like this amongst the Salaf of them correcting each other regarding things regarding the religion. But in reference to what they agree upon, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تجتمع أمتي على الضلالة. He said, my ummah will not unite upon misguidance. My ummah will not unite upon misguidance. And one of our Mashaykh, one of our scholars, Mustafa uh, al-Adawi, uh, uh, he said that this, what is this ummah here, what does it mean? He says this is the people of knowledge and virtue, the scholars of the religion. He's not talking about just every common Joe, you know, that just because all, all of us together we, together we sit here and we all say, well, let's just vote, we're only going to make three shalat a day. And everyone in this room, and we take a vote, and it's 70% say only three shalat, and only 30% say five shalat, so that must mean that we're going to play three shalat then. No, that's not what it's talking about. <laughs> that, uh, it means that the scholars of Islam, the Ahlul Fadl, the scholars of Islam, the, the people of virtue in Islam, the scholars, okay, they will not come together and unite upon something that is wrong. And notice the Prophet used the same word. لا تجتمع أمتي على الضلالة my Ummah will not, he's the same word, Dalala, misguidance. Meaning we won't see the Sahaba, so if the Sahaba have an ijma about something, like uh, Shaykh Dr. Nasir ibn Abdul Salim al uh mentioned in his book um, regarding Usul uh, uh, Aqib al Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, he said that the ijma of the Sahaba, their consensus is also considered ma'asum. It's not permissible for anyone, if the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam agree about something regarding the deen of Islam, it's not permissible for anyone after them to come and have another opinion about it. If they were agreed upon, now if it's something that they had differences of opinion on, that's it's permissible for the, us, other people after them to differ about as well. But if it's something that the Sahaba had ijma on, they were unanimously agreed about this, that this is what this verse means, or this is what this hukum in the Islam, this law in Islam means, then it's not permissible for anyone to come after them and say the Sahaba were wrong, I know better. No, their teacher was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If they agreed about it, that means they got it from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They understood it like that in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? And so that is the religion then. That's the deen. Okay? So inshallah, I hope that answers your question. Inshallah. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. And Allah knows best. So if there's nothing else, like I said, 
الاسئله غير واجبه the questions are not obligatory if you don't have a question it's not no problem we can go home you know yes What is the meaning specifically of bayinat there? I'm not sure. Let's be mutaakid. I would have to. I don't want to speak about the book of Allah without certain knowledge. So I would have to myself even. I would have to look at the tafsir of this verse and see what did the salaf say this verse. This word bayinat here. What does bayinat mean? But bayinat. I know in English. If I translate it from English to Arabic, I know what bayinat means. You know. But I'm saying specifically because he said huda when bayinat. Right, they conceal that which is revealed from the bayinat, from the clear evidences from Allah, well huda, and the guidance. So is your, is your question, is what, what's the difference, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, my, my question is, bayinat here, which means like, uh, like some like writers I'm not sure. I, my, I, my, I, 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 myself, particularly, we talk, you ask me something about what does Allah mean here. So this is a point, this is a point here I want to make to you all. You know, in Islam, we don't speak about the Qur'an. And this is a good question the brother has. There's nothing against him. I'm, I'm, I'm re- reprimanding myself now. It's not about him. It's a very good question. But in Islam, we don't speak about the Book of Allah. We don't say Allah means this and Allah means that, or the Prophet means this or the Prophet means that, except if we have evidence. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى مَادَ عَلَى بَصِيرَةً Allah basira, not with just I think and I shooting from the hip and mumkin hakeda wa adun wa afkana tekeda. This is mamnu'ah. Man, you know, this is pro- prohibited. Mamnu'ah. Shura'ah. It's not permissible to just speak about Allah means this and Allah this because you end up lying about Allah, lying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the things Allah warns about in the Quran. Allah warns about this in the Quran when he talks about what are the, the great sins and he mentions that, the, that you make shirk with Allah and tushriku billah that you associate a partner with Allah. And, and تَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And that you say about Allah that which you have no knowledge of. And some of the scholars like Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah and Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, they mention the reason that Allah mentioned this even after shirk is because every form of shirk is a came from people speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which they had no knowledge of. Okay? So, myself, if someone's going to ask me something about a particular word in the Qur'an, what does it mean here? If I don't know for sure, I will have to tell them, I don't know. I will go look. I can, I can find out. We have Tafsir ibn Kathir and Tafsir al-Qadir and, you know, a lot of different, you know, Tafsir al-Sa'adi al Imam al-Sa'adi has a Tafsir. Many books of Tafsir, Qurtubi, Al-Tabari, etc. And we can look and see what did Ibn Abbas say about this, what did Ibn Mas'ud say about this, what did, you know, the scholars of the past, the Salaf, what did they say about this verse, what does this, this word mean here? But since I don't know specifically, I know just what in English, in, just in Arabic, what does baby not, what does it mean? I know what it means. Okay. But now, that's linguistically. <laughs> to translate it, I'm a translator. I used to be a mutarajan. I lived in Saudi Arabia working as a translator. I can translate. Okay. But now, what does it specifically mean here? I will have to look and see what the seller, do I have a seller for what I'm saying? I'm not just going to guess. Okay. So, that, regarding your question, that's the long answer. The short answer is, I don't know. But I can look for you and see specifically what does this, in the books of Tafsir, what does Bayinat mean there in reference to Huda? Because Allah said, is Bayinat was Huda. So what is the difference between their hiding, their Yaktumuna, and Bayinat, they're concealing the Bayinat of Allah, the clear proofs of Allah, and the guidance, what is the difference between them there in that ayah? Allah Ta'ala, I will look and see. InshaAllah. Uh, Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 For example, you mentioned that uh, Al-Khadr is still alive. Mm. And I said, I never heard of this. <laughs> I mean a lie, but, uh, but I hear I heard this also. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
لا علماء العلماء الصوف افكار ابن ايبو Lies in the cave somewhere waiting to come out. Yeah, yeah. yeah but these type of things. Um, the Prophet ﷺ he said, "Al bayna ala mudda'i." Al bayna ala mudda'i. The one who makes a claim, it's upon him to bring the proof. Okay. And uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Kul hatu burhanakum, mada in kuntum sadiqin." Kul hatu burhanakum in kuntum sadiqin. Bring your proof if you're truthful. You have. If you're truthful, bring your burhan, bring your dalil, adillah. You know, we don't just follow, you know, qil wa qad, you know. And it was, it was said and I heard. And no, 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 no. Bring your dalil. What book is this in? It was just in the book of the sunnah. This was Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, Sunnah Abi Dawood. Where is it? Is it authentic? Masihatahu. What is the authentic, authenticity of the statement? This came from Imam so-and-so in what book? Where, where can I find it? You know, I should be able to read it. There's no, we don't follow a re- religion of hidden scrolls and stuff like that, you know. No, everything is available. The scholars of Islam have made the knowledge available. Islam is not about, it's not a bataniya religion, a religion of hidden, secret, you know, mystical, hidden knowledge and stuff like this. No, this is not Islam. The Prophet has made things clear. He left us upon a clear path. He said, Taraktukum ala mithin bayba, layluha ka nahari ha sawa. He said, I left you on a path that's clear, like bright white. He said, it's night, it's just like it's day. La yuzibu anhu illa hala. No one will do, do deviate from except that he's uh, clearly destroyed. He said, if night is like his day, Layluha kan naharihah. So what? What does that mean? It means in the night time, you can see it just as clear as you could if it was in the daytime. That's how clear it is. Even when it's darkness, you still can see it just like if it was daytime. Can you imagine that? You understand that? Now, I don't mean night like the street lights we have now. Imagine, you guys, a lot of you guys aren't originally from America. We have a statement, the Americans, we have a statement in this country, we say country dark. You all probably haven't heard of this. Anyone ever heard of country dark? Okay. It's a statement indigenous Americans say. Brother, you, you were originally from the United States? You heard of country dark? You know what country dark is. Country dark is, if you go into Arkansas, Alabama, Mississippi, off the beaten path, I don't mean staying on I-40, I mean go off the beaten path on the side roads in the, into the country, we say, okay? Uh, you will, um, see country dark. There are no street lights. Okay? And if it's a cloudy night where you can't see the stars and moon, you can't, wallahi, wallahi al you can't see your hand in front of your face. I've seen it. When you're walking, you'll be walking with someone on the road, and you can't even see the person you're walking with. You all have to keep talking just to know the person is still there. Wallahi, I've, I've witnessed it. I've been in it. I've seen country dark. You know, That's how dark it is. But imagine a, a, a road that in the daytime, you can see it in that darkness, the same way you could in the daytime. That's how clear it is. Okay? There's no room for, you know, shakiness. It's very clear. The Prophet left us upon something that's clear. Okay? It's wild. Okay? It's not something that's ambiguous and hidden, you know, and mystical that you have to go to some special person to find the real, you know, some majahi or some unknown people up in the mountain somewhere to find it. No, that's not Islam. Islam is clear. The Quran, the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu the statements from the Sahaba, their understanding, it's clear. It's recorded in the books. The scholars have recorded these things for us with asanin, with chains of narration, going back to who it came from, that it can be checked to see who got what from who. Okay. So, my point in saying all of this is, when someone comes to you with something like this, and I'm saying Khadr is still alive, you all know who Khadr is. Some people say Khidr, Khadr. This person in the Surah Al-Kahf that uh, Musa alayhi salatu salam came to him and was, he was, Musa was disputing with him about some things that he did, that he saw this person do, that Musa felt like, well, this is, you know, clearly, you know, evil that you're doing. Why did you kill that boy and why did you do this? Why did you destroy the ship, etc.? And Khadr was saying to him, I have knowledge that, you know, Allah has taught me some knowledge that you don't know, you know. And you can't be patient with, how can you be patient with that which you have no knowledge of, okay? So they say this person, has this person who had more knowledge than Musa about those things, he had more knowledge than Musa about those things, they're saying this guy's still walking around today and, you know, has some secret hidden knowledge that people don't. This is from the kalam of, you know, Ahl Tasawwuf, from the Sufis, you know, from people of mysticism, Tasawwuf. 
the Sufiya. Okay? It's not from, you won't find this from the Sahaba saying that Khadr is still walking around. You know, it's not from, this, you won't find this from the Prophet, Lord, the Prophet did not say that. Okay? So you ask him, where did you get this from? Okay? If you understand that about our religion, well, where did you get this from? Who told you that? Oh, my Sheikh said. Who is your Sheikh? Oh, so and so, whatever. It's met who? You know, this person, unknown person of your tariqa that only your people follow, his, 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 his sect, you know. This is not, you know, we don't follow this. We follow the Quran and the Sunnah, the understanding of the Sahaba, and what those who follow them in righteousness, their way. Like Allah says in the Quran, السابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بالإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Okay, Allah says those, these, المهاجرون والأنصار, السابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار, this is the Sahaba. This is some of the Sahaba. I'm sorry, I'm not even translating. Allah says, those first and foremost people, the early generations, from the Muhajirun, those people who immigrated from Mecca to Medina, and the Ansar, those people who helped them and welcomed them and accepted Islam and protected them and protected the Prophet and joined them in, upon righteousness, this righteousness of Islam. Those are the Sahaba. And the middle of Allah says, when Medina tabaruhum the Islam, and those who followed them, followed their way in righteousness, Allah radhi Allah anhum wa radhu anhum. They were pleased with Allah and Allah is pleased with them. Okay? This is our way. You know, we follow the way of the Sahaba, what came from them, those first generations of Islam. Okay? And so those scholars who follow that way, as Allah says, when they the Ta'ruhum bin the Ihsan, the Ihsan, those who follow them in righteousness, those are the scholars. Not people who make up something just from their own dreams and I saw in a dream that Tibr came to me or the Prophet came to me and told me now there are eight salats in a day or that we have to, you all have to come here and make tawaf around my chair or something. Whatever. You know, this is, if it's not, and Allah said, like Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah said, Al-ilmu qala Allah wa qala Rasuluhu wa qala Sahabatuhu. He said, knowledge of Islam is Allah said, the Prophet said, and the Sahaba said. That's knowledge of Islam. If it didn't come from that, that's, it's not Islam. It's not Islam. So even if a person claims this to you, oh, I saw Khidr last week at the park, you know, okay, brother, okay, who told you that he's still alive? Okay, don't tell me your shit. Tell me Allah said, where did Allah say this? The Prophet said, what hadith, where is this hadith, what's the authenticity of it? Who declared it sahih, authentic, what book is it in, okay, of the books of the Sunnah? And who of the Sahaba said that, or believed that way? If it's not, that, if no one of those generations believed that way, then it's not permissible for you to come now and believe that, you know, or, or promote it or call others to it. This is someone who's calling to da'a ila balala, as the Prophet said, man da'a ila balala, he's calling to misguidance. So he will have the sin of whoever follows him in that belief. Okay? And it will, all of those people who believe that and follow him in, him in that, he's gonna, their sins are on him too. And it's not going to decrease anything from their, sin, their, their sins at all. You know, they will be sinful for following him in it, and he will be sin and get, get the sins of all those people who follow that misguided, that dolala. Okay? So Islam is clear, one. You understand? Islam is, Islam is what's in the Quran, what's in the authentic hadith, which is the sunnah, a sunnah to sahiha, and what came from a salaf al salihun, yani a sahaba. With, with tabi'un, with tabi'un, with tabi'un. That's what Islam is, what they were upon. If it's not from that, if they weren't saying that Khadr was walking around and they saw him just last week at Jumu'ah in the back row, then it's not permissible for us to say that. You know, this is haram for us to say that. Okay? Yeah, it is. It's a joke. They, they, they actually say, uh, somebody wanna, you know, want to listen to the film online. Right, right. No. It's very, 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 very difficult. Is it a recording or is it a book? It's an audio recording? Okay, alhamdulillah. Just rock along. Yeah, so yeah, this is, it, it is. This is like a joke. I mean, this is some people, I mean, it, it, I mean, we laugh at it, but on the other hand, you should feel some, you know, anger about that because this is our religion. This is, this is our deen. When someone says things about our religion, they're speaking on behalf of Allah. They're, they're saying Allah means this, and the Prophet meant that. Allah said this, the Prophet, you know, they're, they're just trying to explain Islam. In explaining Islam, they're saying this is what Allah means. Because Islam, this is not something to just play with. It's not just someone's culture and, you, you know, as you like. No, this is, it's revelation, it's wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from above the seven heavens, okay? It's not something to play with, just make up what you feel and play games, okay? So we have hatred for that type of thing, okay? According to how much deviance it is away from Islam, okay? 
Now, I'm not saying we beat these people up and, you know, physically assault them and do, uh, com- commit transgression against them. But, yes, it's funny on one hand because it's so ridiculous. You know, so, it's such, you know, an, uh, a foolish thing to believe or say. But on the other hand, it's, you know, you should feel some hate for the religion, some sense of wanting to defend Islam or some sense of, you know, this is a transgression against Allah's revelation. Because the Quran and the Sun is a, this is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just something to play with, okay? It's not something to, you know, for anyone to just play games with and say whatever he wants to about it, you know. But, you know, inshallah, this is what I have with me. Um, is that it? Okay, play. Inshallah, we'll stop. I'll let you all. We don't want to keep you all here till midnight. Wa subhanakallahu wa bihamdika wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Naam. Amin wa yeah.